Okay, sweet. Let's go. Welcome back, my friend. Today we are going to be discussing why semen retention is a man's most ultimate power and how it can be accessed fully by the art of sexual transmutation. And by the end of this video... Who knows what sexual transmutation is? Napoleon Hill, I think, was one of the first, like, sort of modern Western people to talk about it. Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich. So se sexual transmutation, in the short way to explain it, is just redirecting that sort of sexual hunger drive that you have inside of you into something different, something more purposeful, something more related to your mission and ob objective of goals and everything. I will have convinced even the most logical and rational scientific thinkers among you to why your most powerful energy is found in your semen, your very life force. Uh, women, if you are here, uh, Again, this kind of really pertains to men, but we all know you have men in your lives that you wish to see successful, divine, righteous, and powerful men. So hopefully by the end of this video, you can communicate to them equally, as well as I do, that their most ultimate power is found in their semen. And with that being said, let's get over to the whiteboard and get started, my friends. Okay, my friends, so we're going to begin with number one. I've kind of segmented these into three easy to follow steps. So hopefully we, uh, I'm gonna come at this in the most logical and systematic way without getting a little bit too circuitous, as I often do. But the number one step we need to understand to why semen retention is man's most ultimate power is that energy is everything. Everything we see is energy. Even physical objects, even your chair, your table, the, the computer screen you're seeing me through is vibrating at a particular frequency in order for you to interpret it and um, interact with it. But it's a source of energy in this way. Energy is the fuel. I've never personally understood that that sort of theory of vibrations and energy and stuff. You know, people say that like, oh, everything is just the uh, vibrations or everything. A lot of people have been saying that recently with things like, oh, the law of uh, vibrations and the law of attraction is all about, you know, being on the right vibe and the, the vibration and the energy. It, it's never really kind of like clicked in my brain for that to make sense personally. And it is a source of power obvious thing the obvious here but we need to understand how energy re uh, relates to the human organism to us to our bodies now the human organism is driven by two most fundamental primal energies you are driven firstly by your need to survive the organism to keep the organism alive that is um the, the drive for food and survival the reason you get up in the morning is because first and fundamentally you need to eat and in today's society that is mostly met in Western society. We have an abundance of food and um, we're not starving, thankfully. Oh, granted, we can't speak for everyone, but most people watching me through your screen, you have access to food on a regular basis. The, num the second most powerful energy that we need to understand is a working energy within our very biology as an organism is the ability, um, our drive to have sex and I reproduce. Agree with that. Now, what I want to get across and communicate effectively is male libido in particular and i'm speaking directly to men as the title suggests is the most powerful energy you have you all know that also i'm seeing a, a bunch of comments from a bunch of like little skinny neck skinny wrist motherfuckers oh this guy's a geek he's he's wearing glasses this guy's he's writing on a whiteboard go fuck yourself bro here's a fucking man who's putting out some like good quality work which i respect go watch your fucking andrew tate shorts channel dumbass if you can't like pay attention for 12 minutes to learn about something god damn bro oh but he's right he's right he's trying he's made an educational video shut the fuck up we're here to learn bitch go watch a fucking set 3 a.m motivational motivational montage you gotta want it as much as you want to breathe shut up go watch a fucking little montage fucking andrew tate compilation bro we're here to learn bro um accidentally uh, come across and, and when I show you this this video is about two years old I think I think it's about two years old when I show you this guy's newest videos and you see the transformation that he's went through holy fuck you're gonna your, your respect for him is gonna increase I don't know how someone can disrespect a man who's here literally just like trying to teach other guys some things about self-improvement man shut the fuck up oh but this is an educational video it's boring like shut up pussy some kind of soft porn on social media or YouTube whatever the case may be but it's so powerful it almost takes you over and that is the masculine energy in its essence the overwhelming powerful masculine energy and you've kind of see that how it's illustrated by the fire that builds up inside us whenever we feel the presence of our masculine libido so everything is energy masculine energy is ab he said male libido is overwhelmingly powerful and that straight away just made me realize about like you can almost visualize the hordes of men who don't utilize their libido by a show of spamming your number spam one if you feel like you have a very powerful libido which you utilize correctly spam two if you have a powerful libido which you don't utilize correctly 
and spam three if you don't have a powerful libido. One, if you have a powerful libido, which you're using co correctly, you're utilizing it for productivity. Two, if you've got a powerful libido, but right now you're just kind of like fapping or wasting it, whatever. And three, if you just don't feel like you've got like a high libido, high sex drive at all. So for most of my life, I'd say it was two. For some periods of my life, it would have been three where like I just felt like I didn't have much of a sex drive. And right now for one of the f f like few times of my life, it is well and truly one. So we're pretty much just seeing one and two and every now and then a couple of th uh, threes. There's a surprisingly a large amount of ones. By saying one, you're pretty much saying that you're a very productive guy and you're using your sexual energy for pr for productivity, your mission, your purpose, your goals. I'm surprised that so many guys have said one. Actually, I thought the majority of guys would say two. But I assume, you know, we're kind of biased with this selection sample because the majority of you guys are on self-improvements. So if you feel like it's three in that your libido is just low, your sex drive is low, then that can be an issue psychologically or physically in terms of testosterone and um, I'd say mostly probably just testosterone and just recovering from like not, not just fapping so, so often and everything. If you're saying two, you're just not using your sexual energy productively you haven't sexually transmutated just yet and maybe this guide will t will teach us how and if you're doing one then fantastic you should become successful within a couple of years absolutely the second and most important thing to understand which is the key in all of this to understanding why sex energy is your most powerful energy is energy cannot be destroyed and this is specifically to those of you um, who are particularly rational thinkers, who are scientific minded, who like to see logic and systematic steps and diagrams and bar charts and everything like that. You wouldn't answer. And I understand that. I do too. And it's found in the first law of thermodynamics, which states that energy can be transformed from one form to another, but it can neither be created nor can it be destroyed. So energy can only transform. And that is, again, for you rational thinkers, law. Now, semen retention is the practice of controlling the sex energy. We all know it's overwhelmingly powerful, volatile in some uh, cases, and has probably gotten, well, it's gotten me into a lot of trouble on occasion, and no doubt men watching this, it's gotten you into your um, uh, experiences of a uh, That's actually very interesting. He's just, you know, subtly just said his semen has got like his semen his sort of like sexual libido has gotten him into trouble and you know straight away I'm, in my mind i'm like oh yeah yeah you know i can relate i've had like you know bad experiences with girls i've gotten into trouble because i've been like really horny you know like shit like that and it's actually almost a universal experience for men to have very significant experiences related to our sex drive when you think about it a lot of your life is related to your sex drive your libido when you really really think about it think about how much of your life has been changed simply because of your libido a significant amount perhaps a lot of your goals are based on utilizing your libido your sex drive having sex reproducing with women you know um wanting to find a girlfriend a partner wanting to sleep with multiple girls wanting to have children when you're a little bit younger maybe you're 17 18 and you're like horny as fuck or even 15 16 and you're not focusing it's because your, your sexual drive is so fucking powerful as a young man oh shit that's actually a really good point that he made. It can get you in trouble and can also cause very significant experiences of your life. Hard situations, pardon the pun. Um, but it is essentially the art of controlling this volatile sex energy, this violent sex energy, in its impulsive nature. Because that's, that's how I understand it to be when I'm not in control of it. It makes me very impulsive. It makes me, uh, it's almost as if my body takes over and commits to making its desires um, known instead of my own, myself as a governing organism. And it has created many of these groups and, and um, uh, groups and uh, dogmas, I guess you would say, uh, in the realm of social media and around the world. Things like NoFap are appearing. I've just, I've just become um, savvy to this. Um, but essentially it's the art of abstinence and in some cases celibacy, when you are control, uh, actively looking to control uh, that sex energy and not let it control you. And this is why, I'm going back to the title again, why it's your most ultimate power. Um, and why I believe all men should be practitioners of this. And it's because it is the art of conquering yourself. Lao Tzu, the father of Taoism, put this uh, very poetically, and I'm just gonna read this out, is, he who conquers others is strong, but he who conquers himself is mighty. And again, I don't wanna go off topic or on a tangent here, but the idea that a man has complete government and autonomy over his, not only his thoughts, but over his own impulsive natures, now that, is something to be feared that is a man to be uh, to be trembling in fear of or to be trembling in divinity of that is a man unbounded from the shackles of um sex culture of pornography of social media of women that is a that's actually a massive feat what he's saying is that to influence and 
change other people is already you know a big enough thing to attract a woman to get the respect of men but to be able to change yourself to be able to have control over your own impulses and desires is the next level which is i'd agree with that that's actually a huge accomplishment accomplishment man who has no law to answer to but the law of his own mind and that is a man to be either feared or to be greatly greatly respected and why i believe if you are looking to become the most complete man it is a man who is unbounded by his own nature by his own very biology he doesn't give in to his own impulses and he is not governed by his um this internal dialogue by the mind's chattering nature so we have here energy is everything the masculine energy is very very powerful energy cannot be destroyed and we want to capture this energy and in doing so we capture ourselves we conquer ourselves we master ourselves now here's where it gets very very interesting and where a lot of the practitioners of semen retention kind of hit a wall and they're not really sure what to do with this energy once they've captured it because again it's very very volatile now semen retention is the ultimate power but it pales in comparison unless you learn the art of sexual transmutation and this again, it goes back to the first law of thermodynamics. We can't create um, or destroy the sex energy, but we can transform it once we learn how to control it. And men are learning how to move and transform this sexual energy into an abundance of really, really promising uh, things. Uh, just to name a, a few kind of general ones, but relationships, um, economic success, and building businesses, establishing wealth. A lot of you will be drawn to this video because you have read books of um, the likes of David Dayer's, uh, Dater's The Superior, The Way of the Superior Man, and Napoleon Hill's uh, Think and Grow ri ri Rich. Excuse me, Think and Grow Rich, which um, explains very briefly that we are, we can harness this energy and we can manifest it in the in certain specific areas we would like to see progress, especially the uh, economic and building businesses. The presence, or I should say rather the effects it has on our neurochemistry is staggering. So you can imagine those big influxes of dopamine hitting your system once a day, twice a day, three times a day, how many times you were addicted to it. And you begin to become desensitized to the smaller pleasures in life. No longer does a walk on the beach, a interaction with a stranger mm. or a smile at someone feel as good as it once does because you're allocating so much of that dopamine to that external stimuli. That's something that will cripple and poison your reward center. So what then happens when you begin to abstain, refrain and heal yourself? from this particular substance. And this could be anything. Many of you who perhaps were taking some of the things I mentioned before and cut them out of your life will experience more joy being brought back to you. So again, that dopamine allocated to the illicit substances, we can take that dopamine and begin to integrate it back into our lifestyle. Walks on the beach, walks in the park, park listening to birds chirping, um, watching a beautiful sunrise. Now is experience with someone. How many of you noticed that? How many of you noticed that once you got on to no fap or semen retention, you just started to enjoy the little things more in life. I think there's there's real science to show like your dopamine levels and you know all this sciencey shit. When you're not hyper stimulating yourself with multiple tabs open of porn, fuck me, man. Literally, but you know you you first start off jacking off to pictures or just to your own you know visualizations and you start watching like tame porn which is just like oh lesbians like oh girls kissing oh my god oh, girls like scissoring and <laughs> shit and then you you move on to fucking rough aggressive like porn that you're watching then you're, you're clicking on multiple tabs you found your perfect porn star that you really like then you've got multiple tabs open at once and eventually you're watching like fucking porn compilations which have got like music and it's like a trance like state which tells you like at the bottom it's got like a rhythm which tells you to like stroke your beat on dick to the rhythm fuck me you, you level it up and it's exactly like a drug where you build up the tolerance the porn and masturbation to the point that you need to like overdose on the substance to get the same kind of high that you used to do beforehand and then you get withdrawal symptoms if you try and you know go on no fab, you try and go on semen retention, you try to start watching porn, you literally start getting withdrawals, you get this weirdly physical craving to it, even though you know it's bad, and then you relapse and you feel worse, you get this like post nut clarity, this like psychological shame and guilt. When you do finally make consistent long term progress away from porn and masturbation, it almost returns like a childlike state for you. We start to just enjoy real life so much more. How fucked is that that that's the the negative effect of something that's so widely used and enjoyed is that it literally makes you enjoy l the rest of life less and one of the things that i've recently been thinking about which i which 
despises me, you know, that pisses me off the most is how much porn and masturbation is normalized for young men and teenagers. And you know, it's this thing of like, oh well, you know, it's normal. Like everyone does it. He he. Like you know, just go do it in your in your in your room, Roger. This fucking like Jeffrey propaganda that you see where people say like, oh no, but masturbation's actually healthy for you because it reduces your risk of prostate cancer. Shut up. We're we're like twenty years old. What are you talking about prostate cancer, bro?